For those who have witnessed a wedding objection during the speak now or forever hold your peace portion, what happened? Story one. The wildest thing I ever saw at a wedding happened at my stepsister's rehearsal dinner. It was supposed to be a simple run-through the night before the big day, but it ended up turning into something that felt like a scene straight out of a movie. Let me set the stage for you. This wasn't your typical low-key event with just a few people practicing their steps. No, this was a massive affair with more guests at the rehearsal than some folks have at their actual wedding. Everyone was dressed up, the tables were laid out with food and drinks, and the mood was festive with chatter and laughter echoing through the room. The minister stood at the front, trying to keep control of the room as he quickly ran through the ceremony. He was going over the vows, telling the bridal party where to stand, when to step forward, and all those little details that make a wedding run smoothly. We were all just standing there, half listening, nodding along, and thinking about the dinner that would follow. But then the minister got to the part where he mentioned the traditional line about objections. You know, the old, speak now or forever hold your peace. Well, that's when things took a sharp turn. Out of nowhere, the best man, a guy named Derek, suddenly raised his hand. At first, it looked like he was making a joke, trying to lighten the mood. I remember glancing over and thinking he had a goofy grin on his face, so maybe he was about to make some playful comment to get a laugh. But then he spoke up, and it felt like the whole room went silent. I'm sorry, he said, stepping forward, his voice shaking a bit, but I have to put a stop to this. You could see people exchanging confused looks, unsure if they'd heard him right. My stepsister, the bride, was just standing there with a frozen smile, waiting for the punchline that never came. Derek cleared his throat like he was gathering his courage, and then he said it, plain as day in front of everyone. I'm in love with her, he announced, his eyes locked on the bride. I've been in love with her for years, and I can't let her go through with this marriage. I know she feels the same way. The shock hit the room like a tidal wave. There were gasps, whispers, and a couple of nervous laughs from people who still thought it was some kind of prank. But it wasn't. The minister's jaw dropped, and he just stood there, holding his notes, not sure what to say. My stepsister? She looked like she'd just been slapped across the face. Her fiancé, meanwhile, turned bright red, a mix of anger and humiliation spreading across his face. You could almost see the temperature rise in the room as it dawned on everyone that Derek was dead serious. Then chaos erupted. The bride's mother shrieked and a few bridesmaids started huddling around my stepsister, trying to comfort her and block Derek from getting any closer. People were whispering, craning their necks to see what would happen next. It was like watching a slow-motion car crash. You couldn't look away even though you knew it was all going wrong. The groom's friends tried to step in, telling Derek to back off, and that this wasn't the time or place for whatever this was. But he wouldn't let it go. He just stood there, practically pleading, insisting that my stepsister didn't really want to marry her fiancé, that she was making a mistake. And the bride? She finally snapped out of her daze and shouted, Stop it, Derek! Just stop! Her voice cracked, and she looked on the verge of tears. I can't even imagine what was going through her mind at that moment. One minute she's rehearsing her big day, and the next she's being blindsided by her best man declaring his love for her. It was like a nightmare come to life. It took a while, but eventually, Derek got the message. The groom's father and a couple of groomsmen escorted him out of the room, practically dragging him away as he kept trying to plead his case. The rest of us just stood there, stunned and unsure of what to do. The minister, bless his heart, awkwardly shuffled his notes and tried to pick up where he left off, but there was no saving the rehearsal after that. People were either too shocked to speak or frantically whispering to each other, trying to make sense of what they'd just seen. As you can probably guess, Derek didn't make it to the wedding the next day. In fact, as far as I know, that was the last time my stepsister or her now husband ever spoke to him. I heard through the grapevine that Derek had been friends with my stepsister for years, and maybe in his mind, he thought he was making some grand romantic gesture. But whatever he was hoping for, it didn't happen. All he managed to do was create an awkward, painful mess that no one saw coming. Story 2. So picture this. I'm at this laid-back beach wedding in a small town somewhere along the coast of Canada. It wasn't exactly the kind of event I'd usually find myself at, but I figured, why not? The bride was my ex-step-aunt, which made it kind of a stretch in terms of family connections. She's technically my brother's family, but I hardly ever see them. So I didn't know most of the people there. Still, I thought it'd be a fun way to spend a day. And man, did it turn out to be one of the most unforgettable weddings I've ever attended. The whole setup was super chill. The ceremony was right on the sand, with rows of chairs facing the ocean, waves crashing softly in the background. 
The sky was clear, sun shining down, the kind of weather you pray for when planning an outdoor event. There was a cool breeze coming off the water, and everything was decked out in those breezy, beachy colors, light blues, soft whites, and touches of coral. But the best part? The bride made this epic entrance, flying in on a seaplane that came gliding across the water and landed right by the ceremony. I've seen brides come down the aisle in all sorts of ways, but never by plane. It was a real showstopper, and everybody turned to watch as she stepped off, smiling ear to ear, with her dress fluttering in the wind. Anyway, before the ceremony, there was this little pre-party on the beach, a warm-up of sorts. Drinks were flowing, people were mingling, and a few of us were definitely getting tipsy. The groom's side of the family had flown in all the way from Trinidad and Tobago, and they brought this incredible vibe with them. Cool accents, bright smiles, and an easygoing energy. They were friendly, lively, and it felt like they brought a piece of the Caribbean along with them to this little Canadian beach. You could feel the excitement in the air, people dancing a bit, the sound of steel drums playing somewhere in the distance. It just felt like a celebration. So we're all in a pretty good mood as the ceremony gets going. There's that familiar buzz in the air when everyone's settling down, the kind where you can tell something special's about to happen. The vows were beautiful. I mean, they had a lot of us getting misty-eyed. You could see how much they loved each other, and there's nothing quite like seeing two people so happy and in love. Everyone's quietly soaking it in, all eyes on the bride and groom, and then the minister gets to that line. You know, the classic one you hear at every wedding. If anyone has any reason why these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, speak now or forever, hold your peace. And that's when things took a turn. Out of nowhere, the father of the groom, this guy in his seventies with a head full of dreadlocks and a sharp suit, stands up. He's waving his arms, like he's trying to get everyone's attention, and you could feel this ripple of shock pass through the crowd. A collective gasp, and then dead silence. It's one of those moments where your brain can't quite catch up with what's happening, and you're just left staring, wide-eyed, wondering what on earth he's about to say. We're all holding our breath, waiting for him to speak. You could see some people start to panic a little, bridesmaids shooting each other nervous glances, the groom looking like he might bolt, the bride's face frozen in confusion. But there he stood, not saying a word, just kind of swaying a little with this glassy, far-off look in his eyes. Turns out this gentleman was absolutely baked. I don't know how else to put it. He was high as a kite. After what felt like an eternity, he suddenly breaks into this huge grin and starts chuckling. No, no, I kid, I kid. You could almost feel the collective sigh of relief from everyone on the beach. People started laughing, and it was like all the tension just evaporated in an instant. It was as if he'd pulled off the ultimate prank, and the way he laughed made it clear he thought it was hilarious. The best part? He had this deep, rich, almost musical laugh, and when he sat back down, it set off a wave of cheers and applause. It could have been a disaster, but instead, it ended up lightening the mood and making the whole ceremony feel even more intimate and joyful. After that, the rest of the wedding went off without a hitch. During the reception, people kept coming up to the groom's dad, either congratulating him on the good one or gently scolding him for almost giving them a heart attack. He took it all in stride, just nodding, smiling, and occasionally breaking into that same chuckle that had everyone cracking up during the ceremony. He kind of became a mini-celebrity for the rest of the night, and every time he passed by, you'd see people lean in, whisper, and burst out laughing. Story 3 this story is a real doozy, and I still can't quite believe I witnessed it firsthand. It's one of those situations where you think, this can't actually be happening. But there you are, smack dab in the middle of it, watching the chaos unfold like some kind of twisted reality show. So here's how it went down. I was at this wedding with my then boyfriend who, as fate would have it, is now my ex. The bride was from his family, which meant I was mostly there as a plus one, and I didn't know too many people. It was a pretty formal affair. Very traditional and conservative. They were African American, and the whole vibe had this old school, almost strict kind of feel to it. You could tell there was a lot of importance placed on respectability and appearances, and that's probably why what happened next was such a bombshell. Everything started out like your typical wedding. The guests were seated, the music played, and the bridal party made their way down the aisle. It was a beautiful ceremony up until the point where the bride and groom were standing at the altar, about to exchange vows. The bride's father was actually officiating the ceremony, which seemed sweet at first, one of those personal touches that makes the moment feel even more special. But then, right as they were getting into the vows, the groom's dad stood up, 
and you could feel this shift in the room, like everyone suddenly got tense. He didn't just stand up quietly either. He cleared his throat loudly and said, Before this goes any further, I need to ask the bride's father a question. It was like the air got sucked out of the room. I mean, who does that in the middle of a wedding? At first, it seemed like maybe he had some well-meaning concern, or maybe there was some kind of logistical issue. But then he asked, loud enough for everyone to hear, Is she truly a virgin? I kid you not, he actually said that. There was this collective gasp and then total silence. It was like time just stopped. I could see the bride's face go pale, and the groom's eyes widened, like he couldn't believe what was happening. The guests were all looking around, trying to figure out if this was some kind of sick joke. But the groom's dad didn't stop there. He went on this bizarre rant about how he hadn't been properly informed about the wedding arrangements, and started mumbling something about how he needed to be sure everything was in order before giving his blessing. It was weird, rambling, and honestly super uncomfortable. I felt my cheeks burning just from secondhand embarrassment. I mean, there's awkward and then there's whatever this was. It was beyond cringeworthy. It was disrespectful and humiliating, especially for the bride, who was just standing there, caught in the spotlight of this disaster. The worst part? The bride's father actually responded. He didn't tell the guy off or ask him to sit down. He just said, with a straight face, it is confirmed. I don't know how he could confirm such a thing. And honestly, I didn't want to know. But he said it with such certainty, like this was a normal part of a wedding ceremony, and then tried to carry on as if nothing happened. You could feel the tension in the air, like everyone was holding their breath, waiting for something to break. There were a few murmurs from the guests, and you could see people shifting uncomfortably in their seats. A couple of bridesmaids were just staring at the ground, probably wishing they could disappear. Meanwhile, the groom's dad just stood there, a satisfied look on his face like he'd done everyone a favor. It was surreal. Thankfully, after a few awkward moments, some of the groomsmen and other family members stepped in and escorted the guy out. They didn't make a huge scene of it, but they didn't have to. Everyone could tell he wasn't exactly leaving by choice. As they ushered him away, he was still mumbling under his breath. But by that point, nobody was really paying attention. We were all too busy trying to process what had just happened. The ceremony continued, but it was never the same after that. You could see the bride was trying so hard to keep it together, and the groom was practically vibrating with embarrassment. The vows were rushed, and people were barely clapping when it was over. There was this heavy, uncomfortable feeling in the air, like everyone was still bracing for something else to go wrong. Even during the reception, people were talking about it in hushed tones, like they didn't want to be overheard but couldn't help themselves. It was like a dark cloud had settled over what should have been the happiest day of their lives. As for me and my ex, we had different reactions. I was mortified on behalf of the bride, and I couldn't believe anyone would have the nerve to pull a stunt like that. I remember looking over at my boyfriend, expecting him to be just as shocked, but he was laughing like he thought it was the funniest thing in the world. He kept going on about how entertaining it was and how the bride's reaction was priceless. That's when it hit me. If he could find humor in someone else's humiliation, especially on such an important day, then maybe he wasn't the kind of person I wanted to be with. I think seeing that side of him sealed the deal for me. We broke up about a week later. Story 4. I'll never forget the wedding where I was the best man. I'd known the groom for years, practically grew up together, so when he asked me to stand by his side on his big day, I was honored. The ceremony was set to be a beautiful affair, and everything had been planned down to the last detail. The groom's family, especially his mom, had gone all out. I'm talking about a wedding that easily cost over $50,000. They had spared no expense, and you could see the pride on his mom's face as she watched everything come together perfectly. The venue was stunning. It was one of those elegant country clubs with a beautifully manicured lawn and a setup that could have been pulled straight out of a bridal magazine. The guests were all seated, the music was playing softly, and there was this warm, happy buzz in the air. You could tell everyone was excited to see the bride and groom finally tie the knot. Everything was running smoothly. The bride looked gorgeous. The groom was beaming and the ceremony had this serene, almost magical feeling. Then came the part where the officiant said the line, If anyone has any reason why these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, speak now or forever hold your peace. You know, the part that usually passes by in silence, with maybe a couple of nervous chuckles from the guests. Except this time it didn't. Out of nowhere, the groom's older sister stood up. At first there was this brief moment of confusion. She's a bit of a joker, so when she stood, some people probably thought she was just stretching or fixing her dress. But then she said loud enough for everyone to hear, I object. 
I'll never forget the sound of that. The room went dead silent. You could practically hear the collective intake of breath as everyone's head snapped in her direction. For a split second, it was like time froze, and then she started giggling, like this was the funniest thing in the world. It was one of those awkward, nervous giggles, like she thought she was being hilarious and clever, pulling off some kind of prank. Well, the groom's mother didn't see it that way. Without missing a beat, she stood up, marched over to her daughter, and slapped her. I mean, it wasn't a playful smack. It was a full-on, loud slap that echoed through the room. You could see the shock ripple across everyone's faces. Some people gasped, others just sat there wide-eyed, and a few even shifted uncomfortably in their seats, like they weren't sure if they should intervene or look away. The mom wasn't done, though. She looked her daughter straight in the eye and said, That is not an appropriate joke, and you are no longer welcome here. Go home. There was no shouting, no yelling, just a cold, stern voice that made it clear she was absolutely furious. I've known this family for 15 years, and in all that time, I'd never seen the mom hit any of her kids, let alone in public. She was always strict but kind, the type of woman who kept her cool even in the toughest situations. But this time, she snapped. The groom's sister just stood there, stunned. She wasn't giggling anymore. You could see the color drain from her face as she realized her little joke had gone horribly wrong. She didn't argue, didn't try to explain herself. She just nodded, picked up her purse, and walked out of the ceremony. There wasn't much of a choice for her at that point, not after her mom laid down the law like that. After she left, there was this heavy, awkward silence that hung in the air. The efficient tried to get things back on track, but it was tough. The mood had been shattered, and everyone was still reeling from what had just happened. The bride and groom managed to hold it together, but you could tell they were rattled. Especially the groom. He kept glancing at the door like he couldn't quite believe his own sister had just made a scene like that on his wedding day. The rest of the ceremony felt a bit strained, and people were kind of on edge, like they were afraid something else might happen. Eventually, they got through the vows, exchanged rings, and managed to end on a happy note. But the whole thing was overshadowed by that one bizarre, uncomfortable moment. It was all anyone could talk about during the reception, whispering in corners, trying to piece together what on earth the sister had been thinking. After the wedding, I learned more about why the mom reacted the way she did. Apparently, this wasn't the first time the groom's sister had pulled a stunt that upset the family. She had a bit of a reputation for being, let's say, unpredictable, and I guess this was the straw that broke the camel's back. The groom's mom had been planning this wedding for months, sparing no expense, and she wanted everything to be perfect. So when her daughter stood up and made a joke about objecting, it must have felt like a slap in the face. In her mind, this wasn't just a prank. It was disrespectful, disruptive, and humiliating, not only to her son and the bride, but to the entire family. Story 5. My aunt was getting married for the second time, and the ceremony had this warm, intimate vibe. It was one of those small, family-focused affairs where the air felt light and everyone was genuinely happy for her. She and her soon-to-be husband, Steve, had been together for a few years by then, and you could tell by the way they looked at each other that this was the real deal. Everyone was gathered in this charming little garden under a big oak tree, with a soft breeze rustling the leaves and sunlight filtering through the branches. Now the ceremony had been going smoothly up until that point. My aunt looked radiant, her dress swaying gently as she held Steve's hand. The guests were all smiles, a few even tearing up a bit, feeling the love in the air. But then came that part of the wedding, you know, the speak now or forever hold your peace moment. I always thought it was kind of a dramatic addition to any wedding, but it's traditional, I guess. The efficient, a friendly middle-aged guy who seemed to have a knack for setting the right tone, paused and looked around the crowd, as if half expecting someone to stand up and cause a scene. You could see a few people in the audience stiffen, even though everyone knew this was just a formality. Nobody was going to speak up, right? Well, almost nobody. Just as the silence settled in, a soft, gurgling cry broke the calm. My aunt's baby. My little cousin Ava, who was barely six months old at the time, decided that was the perfect moment to make her feelings known. She was all dressed up in a cute, tiny white dress, resting in my aunt's best friend's arms at the front row. The way she wailed, you'd think she had some serious objections to this whole matrimony thing. For a split second, everyone was caught off guard. My aunt and Steve exchanged a quick, wide-eyed look, and you could see a few people start to panic probably worried this was going to be one of those awkward, unplanned interruptions that make weddings memorable for all the wrong reasons. But the efficient didn't miss a beat. 
With a grin on his face, he cleared his throat and said, If anyone older than six months has any objections, speak now or forever, hold your peace. That did it. The whole place erupted in laughter. You could feel the tension just evaporate. My aunt let out a sigh of relief, and Steve chuckled, shaking his head as if to say, Well, there you have it. Even Ava, bless her little heart, seemed to calm down after that, almost like she understood that her protest had been noted and respectfully overruled. The ceremony carried on without a hitch after that, and when the vows were exchanged, it felt even more heartfelt. Maybe it was because of that little moment of levity. Everyone seemed more present, more connected, like we'd all been through something together, even if it was just a baby's cry and a quick-witted joke. My aunt and Steve sealed the deal with a kiss, and the applause was louder and warmer than I'd ever heard at a wedding. It was like a collective cheer for love, second chances, and everything working out just right. Story 6. I'll never forget that wedding. I was just a guest, tagging along as the plus one for my cousin, who was a part of the bridal party. It was one of those classic church weddings, with the high ceilings, stained glass, and rows of pews filled with people who had dressed their best for the occasion. Everything was set up perfectly, from the flowers lining the aisle to the soft music playing as everyone took their seats. There was a quiet buzz in the air, a mix of excitement and nerves, as everyone waited for the ceremony to start. The bride looked stunning when she walked down the aisle, her dress flowing behind her, and you could see the groom's face light up the moment he saw her. The whole place felt like it was wrapped in this warm, romantic glow. It was like the start of any perfect wedding you'd see in a movie. The pastor had just started to get into the ceremony, and there was this peaceful, almost sacred calm that settled over the sanctuary. That's when things took a wild turn. Right in the middle of the pastor's line, something about love, honor, and cherishing, I think, the doors at the back of the church flew open. I mean, they literally swung wide like someone had kicked them. Everyone's head snapped around, and there he was, a guy standing in the doorway, slightly out of breath, and looking like he'd just run a marathon. He was dressed in a rumpled shirt and jeans, clearly not wedding attire, and had this wild, desperate look in his eye. Before anyone could process what was happening, he started to shout, I do! The whole place froze. You could practically feel the collective gasp of the crowd, like the air had been sucked out of the room. For a split second, it felt like we were all trapped in slow motion, just staring at this guy who'd crashed the ceremony with what had to be the worst possible timing. The bride's face went from glowing to pale, and the groom's expression was a mix of confusion and barely contained anger. It was the kind of scene you might expect in a soap opera, not a real-life wedding. But before the guy could say anything else, two ushers sprang into action. Now, these weren't just any ushers. They were big guys, muscular, solid, the kind of men you'd expect to see at a security checkpoint, not handing out programs at a wedding. One of them happened to be my date, and I'd never seen him move so fast. He and the other usher practically flew down the aisle, grabbed the guy under his arms, and, in one smooth motion, lifted him clean off the floor. I mean... The dude's feet were literally dangling in the air, and all he managed to get out was a startled, uh, as they hoisted him up and started to carry him out, one usher on each side like they were hauling out a piece of furniture. It was the strangest, most surreal sight I'd ever witnessed. For a moment I thought I was seeing things, like maybe I'd drifted off and was dreaming, but nope, this was real and happening right in front of me. The ushers didn't waste a second. They carried him out the doors, which swung shut behind them, leaving a stunned silence in their wake. It was as if someone had hit the pause button on the whole event. Everyone was just staring, mouths open, trying to make sense of what they'd just seen. For a moment, you could hear a pin drop. Then, the pastor, to his credit, cleared his throat, adjusted his glasses, and without missing a beat, picked up right where he left off. It was almost like nothing had happened, though I noticed the bride was blinking back tears, and the groom had clenched his jaw so hard I thought he might crack a tooth. Somehow, the rest of the ceremony went off without another hitch. Vows were exchanged, rings were slipped on, and they kissed to a wave of applause that felt a little louder, a little more enthusiastic than usual, like people were trying to shake off the weirdness that had just happened. Afterward, at the reception, you could see small groups of people huddled together, whispering and shaking their heads, trying to figure out who the mystery man was and what the story was behind his sudden appearance. Story 7 I'll tell you, I've been to some wild weddings, but nothing tops my cousin's wedding reception on that farm. It was supposed to be a big, cheerful, down-home kind of celebration, with the kind of atmosphere where you'd expect some laughter, maybe a few tipsy relatives dancing a little too enthusiastically, 
but certainly not what ended up going down that day. The wedding itself was lovely, set against this rustic backdrop, with a massive pig roast as the centerpiece of the reception. I mean, we're talking about a whole hog on the spit, with enough food to feed a small army. It seemed like half the county was there. Friends, family, folks I hadn't seen in years, all gathered around picnic tables, eating and drinking, enjoying the kind of late summer evening that makes you feel like everything is right with the world. But anyone who knew the family history could tell you there was always a bit of tension simmering just under the surface. My cousin's dad and my older cousin Lonnie had never really seen eye to eye. They'd had some falling out years ago. And though nobody could quite remember what started it, the bad blood was still there. So when I saw them both at the reception, I remember thinking to myself, I hope they can keep it together for one night. Things were going smoothly for most of the evening. People were chatting, kids were running around, and the pig roast was a hit. But as the night wore on and the drinks kept flowing, you could feel the mood start to shift. It was like a thunderstorm building in the distance. Dark clouds rolling in, but nobody quite sure when or if it was going to hit. He had this wild look in his eyes, like something inside him had finally snapped. He was muttering under his breath, pacing back and forth, and then he stopped, looked straight at us, and asked, You guys got my back? Now, we didn't know what he had in mind, but Lonnie was family, so of course we all nodded. It was one of those moments where you think you're just agreeing to help a guy out, maybe calm him down if things get heated. Nothing too serious. We weren't prepared for what happened next. Lonnie disappeared for a few minutes, and when he came back, he was carrying this massive 20-pound bag of leftover pork from the roast, still warm and heavy enough that it looked like he was lugging a sack of cement. I remember thinking, what the hell is he planning to do with that? I figured he might have been planning on taking it home, maybe have some late-night leftovers, but he had other ideas. He started making his way across the lawn, heading straight for my cousin's dad, who was standing by the barn, chatting with a few other relatives, completely oblivious to what was coming. As soon as Lonnie started marching over, my aunt, God bless her, saw what was happening and shouted, Lonnie, no! But it was too late. Lonnie just kept on walking, not breaking stride for a second. Before anyone could react, he swung that bag of pork like a baseball bat and smacked my cousin's dad right in the side of the face. The thud was loud, and there was this awful, stunned silence for a split second where everyone just froze, trying to process what they'd just seen. And then all hell broke loose. My cousin's dad stumbled back, and the next thing you know, fists were flying. Some people jumped in to try and break it up, but others started taking sides. It was like the whole reception erupted into chaos, with people yelling, shoving, and even tossing bits of food. Drinks were spilling, chairs were getting knocked over, and I swear at one point, someone actually tripped over that poor bag of pork, which was now just lying on the ground like a casualty of war. I remember standing there thinking, this can't be happening. This is supposed to be a wedding, not WrestleMania. But there we were, in the middle of a full-on family brawl. Eventually, a few of the calmer heads managed to pull people apart. But by then, the damage was done. It was clear the party was over. The DJ cut the music, and the bride, my cousin, was in tears, just staring at the mess with this heartbroken look on her face. People started gathering their things, whispering under their breath, and making a beeline for their cars. Before long, a bunch of us, including me, Lonnie, and about 20 others, got booted out of there. We ended up standing in the parking lot, trying to figure out how everything had gone so wrong, and Lonnie just shrugged like it was no big deal, like he'd just been doing what needed to be done. I don't think I've ever been more embarrassed, and I wasn't even the one who threw the punch, or the pork in this case. Story 8 I've been to a lot of weddings, but this one still stands out as a wild mix of chaos, charm, and downright weirdness. My girlfriend at the time was invited, and since she knew the families, she dragged me along as her plus one. Both sides were Irish, and even though I didn't know a soul there, I figured it'd be a fun time. Little did I know what I was in for. The ceremony was held at this beautiful, old-fashioned church, the kind that made you feel like you were stepping back in time. Everything seemed normal at first, people chatting quietly, the groom waiting nervously at the altar, and the bride looking radiant as she walked down the aisle. But just as the vows were starting, there was a bit of a commotion. The place went dead quiet, except for a few awkward coughs. Turns out this was the groom's ex-wife. A few ushers quickly escorted her out, and I couldn't catch much of what was said, but I caught a glimpse of her just standing outside, red-faced and fuming, still muttering something as they closed the doors behind her. You'd think that kind of drama would cast a shadow over the whole day, but not with this crowd. 
They just carried on like nothing happened, and the rest of the ceremony went off without another hitch. Now the reception, that's where things really got interesting. They had rented out this gorgeous venue, and the setup was fantastic. There was a band, fancy decorations, and a spread of food that looked like it could feed a small village. But the highlight without a doubt was the music. At some point, after the toasts and the speeches, a bunch of guests just whipped out their own instruments, fiddles, tin whistles, a bodron or two, and started jamming. It wasn't planned, it just sort of happened. What followed was a spontaneous, genuine Irish jig that went on for hours. It was pure, unfiltered joy. The kind of music that made you want to dance even if you didn't know how. I found myself tapping my foot, clapping along and getting caught up in the rhythm. It was like something out of a movie, and I still think about that night whenever I hear a fiddle. But of course, with all that dancing and fun, there was a lot of drinking. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. There were no drink limits, no one glass at a time rules. It was clear that no one was being cut off no matter how sloppy they got. I don't know if this was some kind of cultural thing, or if the families just figured, let's give everyone a night to remember, or not remember, depending on how much they drink. But the booze was flowing freely, and the crowd was more than happy to oblige. Sometime after midnight, I needed a break from the noise and the sea of tipsy revelers, so I headed to the men's room. As I walked in, I thought I caught a glimpse of the groom in one of the stalls. The door was open, and he was in there with a woman. They were close, real close, but it was dark, and I couldn't get a good look. For a second, I thought, wait, is that not the bride? But I didn't know these folks, and I figured maybe it was just someone who looked like him. So I shrugged it off and went back out. Not long after, my girlfriend leaned over and said, we should get going now. She had this serious look on her face, which was weird because up to that point, she'd been having a blast. I didn't ask questions, just nodded and followed her lead. As we were leaving, we had to pass through a stairwell, and there, right in front of us, was the groom again, this time very much not alone. He was all over this same woman from the bathroom, who, by now I realized, was definitely his ex-wife. And when I say all over, I mean all over. Arms wrapped around her, lips locked, the whole works. My girlfriend squeezed my arm hard and kept walking, clearly trying to get us out of there without making eye contact. But as we passed, the ex-wife shot us this look, this smug, self-satisfied glare that said, Yeah, I won. She was clearly drunk, but there was no mistaking that expression. It was a mix of pride and defiance, like she'd just pulled off some master plan. We got outside, thanked a few folks on the way out, grabbed a couple of those complimentary bottles of bubbly they had set out for guests to take home, and made a beeline for the exit. We didn't say a word until we were in the cab, and I could finally ask, Did I just see what I think I saw? That's when my girlfriend filled me in. Apparently the groom and his ex had a bit of a complicated history, and she was the kind of woman who didn't let go easily. She'd shown up to the wedding either to cause trouble or to make some kind of point, and from the looks of it, she managed to do both. Story 9. Back in the early 70s, life in semi-rural Washington state had a certain charm. People knew each other's business, but it wasn't always in a bad way. It was the kind of place where you'd find tractors on the road more often than cars, and nobody blinked an eye if your neighbor's goat ended up in your yard. Weddings, though, they were a big deal. Not just a celebration of love, but a chance for folks to come together, catch up, and inevitably air out some old grievances. So when my cousin announced he was getting hitched, it was an event. The ceremony was set to take place in this big old barn, the kind with wooden beams and hay bales stacked up high in the corners. Now my cousin, bless his heart, was a good guy, easygoing. But his marriage was already off to a rocky start, and it wasn't even because of him or the bride. Nope, the problem was his mom and my aunt, who had been at each other's throats for as long as anyone could remember. The mother of the groom and my aunt were like oil and water. They couldn't be in the same room without sniping at each other. It was over little things, mostly. Who brought the best dish to the potluck? Who could hold their liquor better at the family reunion? But those little things had festered over the years. So you can imagine the tension when they both showed up at the wedding. Everyone was just waiting for something to happen. You could practically see it hanging in the air, like a storm cloud ready to burst. The ceremony started out fine, with the pastor up there trying his best to keep things serious. The bride looked beautiful, and my cousin was doing his best not to sweat through his suit. But then we got to that part, you know, the part where the pastor asks if anyone objects to the marriage. It's usually just a formality, but that day it was more like lighting a match near a powder keg. I don't know if my aunt was actually going to say anything, but she leaned over and whispered something to my uncle. 
That's all it took. Before I even had time to blink, the groom's mom shot up out of her seat, eyes wide like a hawk, and shouted, What did you just say? My aunt, never one to back down, muttered something back, but it was loud enough for everyone to hear. And that's when all hell broke loose. The groom's mom lunged across the aisle, grabbed my aunt's arm, and suddenly they were wrestling right there in the middle of the barn. It wasn't a polite, restrained kind of tussle either. They were pulling hair, yanking at dresses, and knocking over chairs. I think somebody's corsage got flattened in the mix. The pastor, bless his soul, was just standing there, mouth hanging open, clutching his Bible like it was going to save him. The whole congregation froze for a second, unsure if they should step in or let it play out. But those two weren't waiting for an invitation. A few of the men finally decided enough was enough and went out to break it up. I'm pretty sure there were some words exchanged that you wouldn't want repeated in church, but eventually they managed to pull them apart. My aunt's hair was all over the place, and the groom's mom's dress was half torn, but they were separated at least. Meanwhile, back in the barn, everyone was just standing around awkwardly. It was like we'd all witnessed something we shouldn't have and nobody knew what to say. Then, almost like nothing had happened, the pastor cleared his throat, shuffled his notes, and picked right back up where he left off. The ceremony continued, and the couple finally got hitched. I don't know if that's a testament to the pastor's professionalism, or just how accustomed we all were to family drama. The real kicker, though, was after the ceremony was over, when everyone was finally starting to relax. People were sipping punch, chatting, and acting like they hadn't just seen a brawl at a wedding. That's when one of my other cousins, Gary, who's always been a bit of a character, quietly slipped out the back. I didn't think much of it until I realized he was heading straight into the woods. Turns out Gary wasn't much for small talk or family gatherings. He lived out there in a little cabin tucked away in the trees almost like a hermit. So after the wedding, he just moseyed off into the forest like it was the most natural thing in the world, disappearing among the pines. Story 10. I'll never forget that medieval-themed wedding. It wasn't just a regular ceremony with a few nods to the past. It was full-on knights, lords, and ladies, with everyone dressed in those heavy, intricate costumes that looked like they'd been ripped straight out of a fantasy novel. The bride had this flowing, lace-adorned gown, and the groom was decked out in armor that looked both impressive and, if I'm being honest, a little cumbersome. Even the guests got into it, wearing capes, tunics, and crowns. It was like stepping into a renaissance fair, but with a whole lot more tension. Things started off like most weddings do. The groom stood up at the front, looking proud and maybe a bit nervous in his polished breastplate, while the bride gracefully made her way down the aisle. It was all very grand and romantic with that medieval flair. Think harp music, a few people trying to speak in ye old English, and the faint clink of metal from someone's chain mail as they shifted in their seat. The ceremony was well underway and everything seemed to be going smoothly. But then, when it got to the part where the officiant was talking about love and commitment, that's when things took a turn. The best man, who'd been standing off to the side, suddenly stepped forward. At first, I thought he was going to make some kind of toast or offer up the rings. But no, he had other ideas. He cleared his throat, straightened his tunic, and, with a voice that was both bold and a little shaky, declared his undying love for the bride. I swear you could have heard a pin drop. The bride's face was a mix of shock and confusion, and the groom, well, he looked like he'd been punched in the gut. Now, if this had been any other wedding, maybe someone would have jumped in, tried to smooth things over, or at least pulled the best man aside to have a stern talk. But this wasn't any other wedding. It was a medieval-themed wedding, and apparently, that meant anything was possible. So, when the best man boldly challenged the groom to a duel for the bride's love, I half expected someone to laugh it off. Instead, there was this weird murmur of approval, like, Well, I guess this is how we're doing things now. The groom didn't back down. He nodded, stepped down from where he'd been standing, and accepted the challenge. I was still processing what was happening when they marched outside, leading a confused but curious crowd behind them. People were whispering, but mostly there was this tense silence like everyone knew something crazy was about to happen. It felt like we were in the middle of some old epic poem, where two knights were about to clash for honor and love. Apparently the two had been planning this for months, choreographing it down to the last detail. The plan was for it to look like a fierce, epic battle, but be completely safe. Only thing was, when they finally started swinging, it sure didn't look safe. It looked like they were out for blood. There were the loud clangs of metal, sparks flying when their swords clashed, and every now and then, one of them would grunt or shout, as if they were really throwing all they had into it. At first, people weren't sure whether to cheer or be concerned. 
but it didn't take long before the excitement took over, and folks were shouting like they were at a gladiator match. I heard someone even started placing bets. The bride, bless her, was just standing there with her bouquet, looking like she wasn't sure whether to be flattered or furious. They went at it for what felt like ages, back and forth, trading blows, dodging and rolling around like they were auditioning for a medieval action movie. Despite the rehearsals, it looked way too real, almost like they'd decided last minute to make it a genuine duel. For a second, I thought they'd forgotten they were supposed to be friends. I mean, you don't see that kind of intensity every day, and definitely not at a wedding. But eventually, the groom managed to get the upper hand. With a final dramatic swing, he disarmed the best man who fell to his knees, panting and defeated. There was this pause, as if nobody quite knew what to do next. And then the groom extended his hand, helped the best man up, and they both broke out into these big, goofy smiles. Just like that, it was over. The best man bowed, conceded his defeat, and the groom, still catching his breath, took the bride's hand and led her back inside. Everyone shuffled back to their seats, and the efficient, looking a bit flustered but amused, picked up where he left off. They exchanged vows, kissed, and you'd never have guessed there'd been a sword fight just minutes earlier.